Lise, Siméon, au tout départ. Okay, let's start. I'm I'm very very pleased to receive today Marie Hélène Smiejean Van der Roy. Uh, very pleased uh, that she accepts uh, to to come, and she's uh, she's co-founder. Uh, financial and administrative director of Mediapart. Mediapart is a very important journal in France because a very important media, because it's one of the very, very few journal which is independent, independent from big capital firms as, as, as uh, many other media are. So I'm really pleased to have you here. I'm really pleased to uh, introduce you, our student, and I'm really pleased to have this discussion today. So thank you very much for accepting. And the floor is yours for 45 minutes to one hour and then okay. to discussion. Um, so uh, hello. <laughs> Um, so yeah, you must, uh, I must apologize. My English level is not uh, very good now. But um, I understand uh, I can get some cross letter. <laughs> and of course, you know, you can be uh, closer, but <laughs> never mind. <laughs> it's a university, I forgot. <laughs> so um, in media part, I am in charge of everything but editorial. So except editorial. So everything or nothing you can choose. <laughs> but, uh, so. Um, I'm trying to resume uh, 15 years of the story of Mediapart, so it can be, uh, I hope you know a little bit of uh, French uh, media and French uh, organization and problem about the media, but I will try to convince you. So uh, first, of, uh, first of all, why uh, we, uh, we decided to create Mediapart? It was in uh, 200, 2007, and uh, we launched Mediapart in uh, 2008. And at that time, we consider we must have. Uh, ah, il y a un problème. J'ai pas les titres du haut. Ah, euh, euh, Pascal Petit est entré dans la salle d'attente. Voilà. OK. So at that time, we thought uh, there must be at least one independent newspaper in France. You know, if you consider in uh, 2008, uh, here are the richest family of France and uh, one uh, European one, it's uh, Daniel Kretinsky. But you have the richest man in France, Bernard Arnault, and uh, he is also now the richest man in the world, definitely, or oh, fortunately, I don't know. Uh, we have the Dassault family, and uh, we have also uh, François Pinault, fifth richest man. Uh, Xavier Niel, now 13th richest man, and uh, Vincent Bolloré, Patrick Drahi, all of them are the richest billionaires in France, and of course uh, uh, in Europe now, and part of them in, uh, in uh, the world. So at that time, uh, just Dassault family, you know Dassault, it's, uh, they produce arms, and uh, they produce arms. <laughs> And uh, Le Point, François Pinault, it's a caring group. So it's uh, the second one after Bernard Arnault about the luxe activity and so on. So at that time, the richest billionaires just uh, have the Figaro, uh, French newspaper, daily newspaper, and Le Point, a magazine, um, hebdomadary, hebdomadaire, weekly. But now you can consider so also they, they ask, sorry, there is a list. Well, but now you can consider they have uh, bought during uh, 13 years, quite all the press in France, not only the newspaper, but also radio, but also TV. And uh, it's unfortunately for us, it's a very big problem because we consider uh, the press must be independent if we want to, to be able to publish information, to publish investigation, to publish the, the, the job of the journalism. So uh, you can consider now, we, in 2008, we said that will be, but if we, if, if we don't do anything, 
we will not have any uh, French independent daily newspaper. So uh, we decide to create, that's why we decide to create Mediapart. So at the beginning, you have four founders. Uh, um, it was 15 years before, <laughs> since the day of the opening. <laughs> it's, it's a tough job, Mediapart. <laughs> and uh, François Bonnet, Laurent Moudoui, and the Louis Prenel. At the beginning, in fact, we were six, but uh, one of them changed uh, his mind just before the launch, and uh, another one changed his mind and, and, uh, and leave uh, the, the company uh, one, hour, one year after. So we, 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 we are four founders. And uh, we, we, we didn't wake up a morning saying, okay, we are going to create a, a, a newspaper only on digital without advertising and only with a subscription model. We, 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 we had the first key issue, we must have at least one independent newspaper in France. So we have to think about at that time, how can we, can we be independent, independent in France and uh, what kind of newspaper we could create uh, with the key issue of the independence. So uh, first of all, what's the question of the medium? Because you know, if we wanted to create a paper, newspaper, uh, the paper support medium, uh, it was, uh, we, we need to have 40 million euro. And of course, we didn't have 40 million euro. Uh, so if we ask for 40 million euro, we, we should ask to the uh, uh, billionaires as usual, for example, you have one, they did that, L'Opinion, it's, it's a newspaper. You have another one just launched by uh, Xavier Niel, it's uh, L'Informé. These two newspapers belong again to the billionaires. So we said, okay, we don't have 40 millions and we will not ask to billionaires, so what can we collect? And uh, Edouard Plenel and I, we borrowed 1 million euro and after that, we find with uh, uh, François Bonnet and Laurent, Laurent Moudoui, 200,000 uh, 200, euro. And uh, uh, of course, we find some friends and we, we try to collect, at least we could collect 3 million euro. We thought it will be maybe necessary to have 5 million, but we decided to start on only digital medium because it was the only way we could uh, uh, have the money to create the newspaper. So that was the first uh, the first questions on the medium. The second one was uh, about the revenue. At that time, but you, you, you all are very young, so you did not know that at that, that time, but at that time, everything on the internet was free. And in fact, it's never free. It was paid by advertising at the time, and now it's free, but it's paid by your data. So you give your data, you give your life information, you give everything, and, in, uh, and you can get uh, information or you can get services. So we, could be, uh, we couldn't be independent if we accept advertising. So we decided at that time the only way to be independent about the revenue is to get subscription model. But at that time, we were the only one, even, even the New York Times changed its mind because when we tried to get money from uh, banks or from uh, some people, we said, no, but the New York Times is, is still on a subscription model. But in 2007, they changed the model and they go to the, to the, the, the free model with advertising and they, they understood three years after it was a big mistake. But at the time we were the only one with a bit, we, we, we think we can get uh, 50,000 people uh, ready to pay for independent information. So that's why we, we choose, that we, we didn't, I, I said, we didn't uh, wake up. We said we will be on, only digital and we will be only on subscriptions model. But we consider it was the only way to have an independent journal on the, on the internet. So, um, you know, 
it's always difficult when you when you create and i hope you will do when you create a company uh what makes a company uh succeed you know uh, I, I i have created a lot of com uh, not a lot but uh, at least three companies before you uh, media part and uh, i think the success is if you have the good idea uh with the right people at the right moment so we could have the good idea in some influence uh and so independent of information digital only no ad subscription model and we we thought we could get uh 50 000 people ready to to pay for the, that kind of information in france for independent news and the white people was also very important because francois bonnet edouard plenel laurent Maudoui, uh, the, the three co-founders with me were very famous in France, and the and journalists believe they can um, manage a newspaper. They had a huge experience. They were before at Le Monde or Libération, and they they was uh, probably the, the best uh, in France. We say canardier, but it's a translation of canard. So I don't know how we can say, it. but they have a huge experience for for what what kind of information you have to produce uh in france i mean not all the informations but investigation information and uh, and uh, this kind of, uh, of, uh, of uh, way to, to to work journalism so uh we 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 uh, recruit uh, 23 journalists from uh from uh, the different uh, newspaper and these people decide to to leave their established uh, job in a newspaper established with very it was very easy to 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 stay and they decide to to join mediapart because they wanted to to recover independence of the job be able to to make investigations they want to and if they succeed in the investigation the, the investigation is published in the newspaper and not put uh, out uh, of the of the newspaper so it was a selection of people you know they they, they accept because when we launched mediapart we said okay we have three millions we we have two years uh maybe three years it depends if we succeed or not uh, about uh, the recruitment of subscribers so you join us we we are a subscription model no one believe it's possible and uh, we are uh, four co-founders, but it's uh, really a, a, a bet, a bet. And they, they choose to come with us. So they wanted to be able to, to practice the real journalism, uh, deep, independent journalism. So it was very important for the people. Someone say, no, uh, sorry, I don't come. And I stay in Le Monde or I stay in Liberation or I stay in Les Echos and so on. So the people join us at that time wanted to practice this kind of journalism. And uh, also um, the other uh, the question was with uh, 23 people, 23 journalists, what kind of information we can produce? Because if you consider at Le Monde, you have 500 journalists if you consider at uh, the new york times you have 1600 journalists so how can we explain you will pay for an information produced just by 23 journalists and at that time we decide they will not pay for the information they can get for free outside you can get now everything for free outside such as you can uh, access to IFP, you can access to all the, um, uh, the, the press, press agency. So um, we we had to find what kind of information they couldn't uh, get for free outside. And the, the, the first one is investigation, of course. Investigation, it's a long time, a long, uh, very difficult uh, job but if you don't do that um you 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 are published the, the same information that all of, all of so um we had a good idea 
um, the right people at the at the right time because uh, uh, you know at that time uh, in uh, 2008 and it's still unfortunately uh, the same now but they were French daily newspaper were very unprofitable because it was a very big change of the model uh, you know before it was paper and the distribution uh, through uh, uh, old model of distribution and uh, the uh, the uh, internet re revolution arrived and uh, they they made the, the big mistake to say okay i will give my information from the paper to internet but with an advertising model only and it was a we, we we never understood why they did that because it was a a, a very bad uh, analysis of the of the um, situation at that time. So they they were not on the digital aspect. So it was possible for us to uh, to 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 enter on the market, and also uh, I mean it was specific in France because uh, if you consider the Guardian or uh, all the all the newspaper in Europe. And even the New York Times or the Washington Post and, uh, and so on, they they went to the subscription model very quickly. I mean, the last one is a uh, is a Guardian, but now also they they, they moved to the subscription model. So, but they they were profitable, so they could uh, pass ten years to to change the model and pass from the paper to internet solution and from. Uh, from advertising to a subscription model. But in France, it was unprofitable. So they have been bought by some billionaires and billionaires didn't invest in the newspaper because they, they didn't have any project for media. They just want to buy influence and to control information and to exchange the influence with the business. They never invest in the, as they should be uh, for for the transformation, such as Guardian Trust has has done, uh, New York Times has done. They sold the the the, the, immeuble, immeuble, the, the building and so on. So, but unfortunately, French billionaires didn't invest at the time. But for us, it was good because uh, we have a space to 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 enter on the French market and to be the only one with a subscription model. So, um, white time, white people, good idea, but unfortunately, it's not enough. Because you can see on these figures, after two, and it was really very tough, very tough years, you know, the first and the second year of Mediapart. It was very, very hard because we had a business plan, of course, because we wanted to, to get. Uh, 50,000 subscribers after three years, so it was easy. The first one we had 15, and the second one we had um, 15,000, and the second one we have 30,000, and the third one we have uh, 50,000. But as you can see, we it was not <laughs> uh, like the business plan, and uh, we have already. Uh, lost a lot of money uh, i'm not sure you can see the figures but uh, the first year here we we have lost 200 and uh, 250000 no 2 million 200 2 million and 50000 euro and uh, the second one uh, 200 2000 no 2 billion two oh, je vais y arriver enfin vous l'avez compris Thank you. So, uh, and uh, we had uh, at the beginning three millions, and uh, two years after we uh, we succeed to convince an investment fund to to put one million, and we collect one million again. And unfortunately, we have lost at that time quite all the money we could invest for the for the launch of Mediapart. So it's not enough, but for. Um, makes companies succeed we have we need a bit of luck so uh, it was mid uh, 2010 and we 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 breaking the first very big affair media part uh, very uh, 
it was uh, Betancourt, we, we, I mean, for French people, you know, you know, we know that for foreign people, it's not so well known, but uh, we had the richest woman in France linked with the political party, the Sarkozy party. L'Oréal, yes, she's uh, the, uh, the owner of the share, main order of uh, L'Oréal. So now she's, she's dead, but... Uh, and. Um, the Nicolas Sarkozy, the French president, and uh, Eric Wert, the Ministry of Budget, had link with uh, with her, and uh, she gave money to the party. It was forbidden, and uh, she she um, had a lot of 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 uh, hidden she had a lot of uh, of which uh, uh, richest hidden in the world, and so on. So. At that time, if it, uh, this this first story uh, helped us to to succeed to to get the fifty thousand, because as you can see, uh, finally uh, it uh, this this um, breaking was Betancourt uh, allowed us to reach fifty thousand subscribers and the break even. So you can see just here we uh, at the beginning of uh, two. 2011, we 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 get the break even, and we succeed to get 50, uh, 50, 000, uh, 50 000 subscribers. A little bit more, fifty thousand. So, so, so. so, but uh, it was really very very difficult at the time. So uh, after the first break even, we had to to uh, to, to grow and to uh, to complete the team because uh, you know at the time we still have only twenty three journalists. You can we can see when we create uh, Mediapart, uh, it, and, and it was a big mistake. But we we put all the money on journalists to say we have to to to. Uh, give information, give information, give information, and the only way to get subscribers for the newspaper. And uh, I thought it was stupid, but I thought it's, um, if you have a good uh, newspaper, it's enough to, to meet the subscribers. So you can see there is no marketing and there is uh, no uh, social networks and there is uh, nothing, no technical support and so on. So, we uh, we learn of our mistakes and we we create a team the team necessary for a newspaper so it should be half journalist and half operational services and in these oper oper operational services um, main part is IT services because it's a daily newspaper and a 24 hours newspaper and uh, and we must access very quickly to the information. And we have eight people about social networks. We have 12 people with the marketing and 10 people for um, answering to the subscribers, support to the subscriber. So um, altogether now we are in, the, in uh, 2022, we are 136 employees in, a, in Media Park. And, it was multiplied by five, but if you consider it was during 10 years. So it's no more than 10 by year because we wanted to keep uh, a small team, very dynamic and very efficient. And we don't want to be uh, too big, too fast. And we don't want to uh, don't be profitable. We consider, we always consider we must grow and stay profitable because when you are profitable, you are independent and you are able to invest uh, by yourself. So the, this, um, this, uh, steps, these steps were very slowly, 10, 10 by 10, and uh, able to, to, uh, to, to, to keep a, a very dynamic. It's very important in a newspaper to have the editorial dynamic and to, to, to stay all together. And also, you know, when we we, we launched Mediapart, uh, we were only digital, um, digital only, and 
it was a little bit difficult because at that time people still have used to read a newspaper and uh, to open a newspaper and to check the information they are used to get in the, in the newspaper. But uh, in fact, in, the, uh, in this, uh, this decade, we had a lot, a lot of change. You, of course, you don't know that, but uh, you know, when we launched Mediapart in 2008, Google is only half search engine, um, la moitié des moteurs de recherche, enfin la part de marché. He has, yes, uh, yes. And uh, Facebook is, uh, is just starting. Twitter doesn't exist. Uh, you don't have, uh, iPad is just uh, launching. You don't have any, you, you don't have, you, you just have iPhone, but uh, that doesn't exist. And uh, of course we had in, uh, in, uh, in uh, 30 in 15 years we had to to uh, accept and integrate all the new technology but for us because we were only digital it was much more easier uh, if you compare with a newspaper with a, he, they never know do they put the information on the paper or do they put the information on the internet with the advertising and they they, they, they have lost uh, a lot of time during that period and for us it was very efficient because as a full digital uh, new uh, journal you, it was very easy to integrate not easy of course but much more easier it's just that uh, to integrate all the new technologies and to to uh, to be able as soon as we could we produce uh, sounds in the in the in the articles and after that pictures of course and after that video and after we develop a lot of uh, you can you can see here so you have more than now five thousand video in in uh, in media part you have more than one thousand and five hundred podcasts of course we had a lot of portfolio we have a lot of documentaries so. It was a competitive advantage for us to be 100% digital. And that's why we also succeed to, uh, to be faster than the other newspaper, because uh, at that time, they had a lot of difficulties to manage two medium paper and uh, digital. So at least we achieved, and now uh, newspaper has more than 200,000 of subscribers. You can see sometimes here is a three, three years. And after that uh, step, here we, we get uh, 80,000. Uh, 80, we pass 100,000 after uh, in, uh, in 2006. And after that, we, 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 we pass with 200,000 during COVID period. So, this period is unusual because we, you know, during COVID period, we had a lot, we had a big um, breaking news also about the mask in France. And also uh, part of the, of the subscribers just came during the COVID period and, and but didn't stay because it was a very specific uh, time at that time. And also we, we are, and we wanted to, to stay very profitable of course, during COVID period, we have so many subscribers and uh, less charge. So it was uh, an unusual uh, profit period because we, we get until 30% of uh, the revenue as benefit before tax. As a, so the result before tax was exceptional. But uh, we, we consider from the beginning, we should have a target to get a result from 15 to 19 percent of the revenue because we need to invest every year we we never distributed any any dividend dividends and uh, we keep all the money during this period to uh, to reinvest and reinvest and, the, and reinvest and complete the, the newspaper so of course it's very high profitability, but it's possible. And when the newspaper or the newspaper in France are still losing a lot of money and be unprofitable, that's because they didn't invest, they didn't change, they didn't move, and uh, they have to do that because 
it's not a good thing, you know, in, in France, you have French government helping uh, the newspaper uh, with uh, giving them subsidiaries. And it's not a good decision for the democracy. It's not the role of the government to give money to the newspaper. They must be profitable by themselves, by their um, shareholders, by the people own uh, the own the, the, the newspaper. They don't have any dependence from the French government or from the GAFA. We will we will see that later. So it's. So 15 years and at the end. So what about the transmission? Because, you know, when we start Mediapart, the founders, uh, I was uh, 55 and Edouard Plenel was uh, 56 and uh, Laurent Maudouy was uh, 57 and uh, Francois Bonnet, which was the youngest, he, he was only, I think, uh, 48 or 49. So. We, we start from the beginning, we have to, to think about the transmission. We didn't create Mediapart uh, to, to earn a lot of money. We, want to, we wanted to create Mediapart to keep one French independent newspaper in France. So uh, we have to think about the, the, the questions, how we can be sure the, uh, the the successful media part story can be transmitted uh, to the to the team and can and the independence can be maintained after the founders because at, at that time you know uh, the four founders and uh, uh, salary com salaries company and also uh, I think it's not very net uh, and also, um, we 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 had a company with uh, friends. They, they they bring money at the beginning for the creations, and altogether we had sixty two percent of the capital. And uh, uh, we had so we control independence, and we could be sure we have the independence. And um, we have two two um, outside. Uh, investors, partners, or two companies, they were here with us uh, from the beginning, from uh, 2008, Doxa and Ecofinance. And, sorry, sorry. Hello. Um, so, uh, Doxa was uh, one independent man. He had, uh, he succeeded to have a lot of money through, what is called the site de, de rencontre. Uh, Yes, yes. And he wanted to help press. He was convinced as us that we need to have French independent newspaper. And Jean-Louis Bouchard, Ecofinance, was a friend of me because I worked during uh, 20 years in IT services and I managed big companies uh, belongs to Jean-Louis Bouchard. And it, he was confident if I invest in a company, he, he could help. And he was also uh, convinced we need also a French independent newspaper. And for your information, he was a friend of the VERT, the, the Ministry of the Budget, the first break even, uh, breaking, <laughs> breaking news of Mediapart uh, is against uh, Eric Vert, And Eric Vert is a friend of Jean-Louis Bouchard. So, but he was convinced we need to have a French independent newspaper with an investigation. And if it's not fair, it's not fair. So uh, he support us and, and much more than that, I will say at the end. But um, so uh, we said, OK, how can we? We have a two questions. We will transfer Mediapart to the team, to its team, because uh, I spoke about the founders, but of course, the successful link to the team of Mediapart. But we, we consider we can transfer the capital to the team because it's not the best protection and they are not, uh, maybe not able to manage this kind of situation. So we wanted to transfer to, uh, uh, I mean, the, the a place no one could buy 
or, or change anything about the independence of the media part. And at that time, we met a uh, Guardian team and the Scott Trust, you know, uh, the Guardian belongs to a foundation, a trust, and uh, from 130 years, uh, they uh, stay, uh, uh, so the, the, the founder of the Guardian gave all his money and the newspaper to the Trust Foundation, the, the Trust, uh, Scott Trust, uh, and um, he is, um, it's, it's a key, uh, that was the right e idea we had when we decided to, uh, to uh, we, we thought we can do something like that. We transfer the newspaper to the team, the management of the newspaper to the team, the evolution of the newspaper to the team, but we have to, to locate uh, the capital in uh, quite something of the foundation. <clears throat> and of course, we, <laughs> that means we we didn't sought to sell Mediapart to the highest bidder or to 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 sell Mediapart to the children of Edouard Plenel and Marie-Hélène Spiegent. We thought this newspaper has to stay independent in perpetuity. That's something else. But we <laughs> so um, at that time uh, you have here a board of directors and you have a executive committee in Mediapart. Here is the, the, the separation between profit and non-profit organization. So now I'm going to explain. It's a little bit complicated, the structure, but I hope you, 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 you will follow. And uh, because this, this structure can be uh, used for a lot, a lot of companies to protect the, the, the target of the companies, to protect the, uh, the, the role, uh, non-profit organization and so on of the company. So we start, we still have here a board of directors and media part. And we have created an association whose name is uh, Association for the Right to Know. Here are the four co-founders and the president of the um, uh, salaries company inside. We, we have a small company with uh, the, the salaries could invest some, uh, some uh, money and they were part of the, of the shareholders. So we create ADS, it's, in a, it's an association. And the ADS creates the fund, uh, press, free press fund foundation. So, uh, in French, it's a uh, fond de dotation. That means it's quite the same than a foundation, so uh, except foundation in France must have 1 million euro. We didn't have 1 million euro. And you have um, a government represented inside the foundation. So we, we, we didn't want to have the structure of a foundation, and we choose a structure of fond de dotation, but it's quite the same for, for you. And after that state. So what, what's the role of the foundation here? He has mainly a mission of general interest. He must have a mission of, of general interest. So that means his mission is different freedom of information, press pluralism, and independence of journalism. So for that mission of general interest, he can collect donations from outside people, and we start deduction. And of course, he helps, for, he, he, he manages this, uh, this uh, mission of general interest and help several press, independent press projects. You follow? It's okay. So, a little bit complicated. <laughs> so, um, we create another company, SPIM. That's a Société pour la Protection de l'Indépendance de Mediapart. That's a, it's just a, a, a holding between the FPL, between the foundation and the uh, Mediapart. So why did we create the, the, this company? Because we had to borrow from a bank a loan and uh, to be able to, to buy 100%, quite 100%, of uh, capital of Mediapart. So in 2000 and, uh, 
and the 19 create uh, we create the spin we get more from the banks and spin by 100 percent of uh, the shareholder of Mediapart of the shares of Mediapart and ADS the association still have one share here and one share here and at that time spin uh, make an uh, I think it's undermined uh, dotation an undermined of the share of the spin to the FPA. So uh, at the end of 2019, FPL holds 90% of the capital of Medapart through the SPIM. And no one can buy any share of the foundation. No one can change anything in the, in the, now in the capital of Mediapart because the capital of Mediapart is here and the, the capital, the share of the of SPIM are here. So with that way, um, you know, the, the, the SPIM on those FPL with shares and the FPL now controls through the SPIM 100% uh, of capital, except we still have ADS. We still have one uh, um, voice, I mean, a white decision here, one share here and one share here. So why we did that? Because ADS is a guarantor of nothing can change here. Because if you want to change the statutes of, uh, of the structure, FPL or SPIM or Mediapart, you need to have unanimity decision. So that's why we just have one voice here, one share here, one share here. Because if you want to change anything, you, you, you can change without the agreement of the association of the four founders. And also, so, um, so now, today, in the future, it will, it will be another question. We have finished because, you know, we have, you have seen we had an exceptional results during COVID period. So we have already uh, fully repaid the loan. So at the end of the of March 2023, it will be finished. So now we have an hundred percent of the control of the SPIM in the FPL, and the and the, and the SPIM control hundred percent of the media part. So no one can change anymore. So. Um, the, the FPL, the foundation, supports a lot of independent press project because they, they have been created in 2019. And so you have more than 10 projects, independent press, and they have collect close to uh, 300,000 euro uh, from uh, donations. Mediapart just transfer a little part of the subsidiaries, dividend with subsidiaries, to, to help FPL to cover the fixed charge. 100% of the, uh, the collected donations are used to uh, help news project, independent project, with, of course, a special committee to, uh, to select and agreement as independent, what's the project, and so on. So Mediapart remains because we still are a profitable company. So women's commercial, commercial activity and whose sole income is from with their subscriptions. So no change for media part. They still are only paid by uh, subscriptions. No money are coming from there. No money are coming from there. In the future, Mediapart will remain controlled by a non-capitalist structure, so the foundation. We move from any demand to make a profit and who's only concerned in the general interest. So it's close to be finished. So we, when we discussed with David, we said, you know, in perpetuity, what does that mean? And uh, in fact, uh, we decide to put this, uh, this uh, uh, I mean, in perpetuity, because when we met the Guardian, 
we ask to the Scott Trust uh, CEO, what the, uh, how do you explain the, uh, the target of the, of the Scott Trust? And he, uh, because we, 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 it was very difficult for us to, uh, to uh, fix the statutes of the, of the foundations, the statutes of the holdings, the statutes change of the sign. And he said, it's not difficult. Our mission is to uh, keep the guardian has he always been in perpetuity? So, okay. Uh, of course, um, there is in uh, Scott was one billion pounds. So we um, a milliard of pounds. Yes, one billion pounds. So you can consider the perpetuity with uh, more con be, be more confident. But in fact, uh, we think all the capital of media part. Uh, it's well protected. The only thing uh, we could we could um, attack Mediapart if they it's, if they lose money if in one day they are no more profitable. So, um, so for the next years, uh, of course, no one can pretend to ensure independence forever. But we have, uh, if we consider the next fifteen years. We have two major issues because um, we have a very big, big problem with the GAFAMs. They are taking over information, control of information, and uh, mainly in France because, you know, they control distribution of the information through, through search engine or social networks. They create in France competitive distortion uh, because. Uh, they pay directly some media, they pay Le Monde, they pay Le Figaro, they pay Liberation, they pay a lot of media in exchange of the data, of the, of the, the reader's data. So we can't accept that a foreign company uh, pay for the information, what, what uh, French people read, what, what they think about political uh, opinion, how the democracy can be kept with, uh, with this kind of risk. They refuse to pay tax in the country. You know that, and even if they, if they will pay taxes, 15% of taxes on the, on the result is not the amount in France. We pay 30% taxes. So why should we accept they pay only 15%? And they, they earn a lot, a lot of money here. And of course, they contribute to the spread of fake news and buzz in, instead of uh, information. It's a very big risk to, to let the GAFAM uh, stay and uh, taking power on the information. You have two main laws if you want to, to, to look at them, two main laws recently um, taken by European uh, organization to protect the press, independent independence of the press, and uh, to pro to uh, to control the uh, the action of the GAFA, but it's not still implemented in in uh, in Europe, in France, in the countries, and they are still uh, taking over the, the the control of the information, and of course also, but it's uh, this is uh, an, an, an European problem. And I mean, maybe a worldwide problem, but uh, it's still a problem in Europe because all these companies are American. So you can accept the American companies control uh, European information. So it's, it's a problem. And of course, um, we have to prevent in France concentration of the media in hands of a few billionaires because it's not only newspaper, each of them both a newspaper, a radio, a TV, uh, and uh, now they want to control more and more about the information. So despite uh, all our efforts, uh, only with a subscription will ensure media parts independence for another 15 years. And the key issue, at least for the next 15 years, are <laughs> the same than we launched media part. So that we have a new team now at the head of uh, media part. Uh, I will um, uh, retire uh, in March. So there is a new uh, general manager in Mediapart. She's 40 years old. 
<laughs> yeah, I paid the loan, everything is done, statutes are locked. So, and I am the president of ADS. You have to keep. <laughs> <laughs> so, I don't know. Do you? It, you speak? Uh, <laughs> Voilà. Et alors, j'enlève ça. Ah bon. Aber also meine halt, das sind jetzt wirklich Studenten. Hello. Okay. <laughs> okay. Um, so, yeah. So, thank you for listening. And so I will start to give a um, short overview about the French landscape because a lot of people are not from France here and we skip into it. Um, and mainly we are um, just focusing on the press. And so in France, you have about nine national daily press. You have 45 local daily press, 
um, uh, 55, uh, 54, <laughs> then you have 45 weeklies and then 119 um, niche and professional magazines. Um, and on this graph, we can see the um, most important newspapers of France. Um, in 2021, the, um, the, the graph, like the scale are the circulations, not readers, just to, to know. And um, so in 2021, the newspaper with the most circulations was Le Monde, um, followed by Le Figaro. Le Monde is um, politically, can be considered as politically um, central left, while Le Monde is a conservative newspaper. The, uh, Le Figaro. Then, <laughs> um, <laughs> then we have here also Le Parisien, which is regional, but it can um, be with the EF. It's a national newspaper as well. Um, then the yellow one is Le Quip. It's a sports, the focus on sports. And Le Sejo, sorry for the pronunciation. <laughs> um, and it's um, a liberal. They talk about finance. And then you have some left, the libera Liberation and Le Humanité. And we also put here Media Part, which you have, but yeah, you have to interpret it with caution because um, that's um, subscriptions. And of course, as we have, know yet, that media part is digital, so you cannot really compare it that. But still, you can see um, while, um, yeah, the traditional are kind of constant or declining, um, you can see this rise in um, the media part. Um, so um, the text for today, like the authors, Alphonse and um, Rolnik, they attested that France is, um, yeah, there's a high, there's a high um, dependency on political and private um, business. And this leads to public distrust. And this is also manifested in the World Press Index. And in 2016, France was only on the 45th place from 180 countries. Um, you might think that this improved since in 2020, Two, it was in the 26th place. Although, I think if you look at the points, the points did not really increase that much. And I know from other European countries, as Austria and Netherlands, that they had huge problems. So they got worse. So maybe they did not really improve that much. But it's more about the others who got worse. And so to understand the interconnection between the government and the French media, it might be helpful to look at the history of press in France. And it all started after the French Revolution and, and the French Declaration of Rights of Man and Citizen, um, where it was declared that, um, that there is free communications of thoughts and opinion. Um, and it was in that time when the idea established that press should function as the fourth power um, to, to control also, like you have the legislative, the executive, and the judicial as a control institution. Although this did not really long like worked in that time, since Napoleon took power in 1799 and he um, implemented a state censorship. And so it was basically until 1871, after the French German War and the implementation of the Third Republic in France when um, press got more influence again. And in that time, uh, like the parties were very um, di diverged a lot. So also the news had to choose a side. So it was quite politicized, although in the, already in the beginning. And there are some examples, for instance, the Dreyfus affair in 1894. And Dreyfus was a French general, and he was Jewish, and some people um, accused him of being a spy for the Germans. And before there was even a trial, some um, anti-Semitic newspapers um, said that he is guilty. And in the end, he did not get a fair um, trial, and it was, um, it was said that he was guilty, although he was innocent. 
And there is a nice movie, it's called Chikase. I don't want to spoiler how it ended so that you can see the movie. And then also during the um, Second World War, you can see this polarization um, between like there was the Vichy regime um, and some papers sympathized with them while others fought um, for the resistance. Then in the beginning of the um, Fourth Republic, um, media had, like they did not have many, much resources, so they heavily depended on the government and also the agents Frost Press the, was um, re-established and it's the world's oldest news agency press and they also depended a lot on the government. And so today you can, there are um, high intercorrelations between the government and the, and the medium. And this gets manifested in um, different things. For one thing is that um, they get indirect and direct subsidies. And so there are subsidies for small newspapers to foster pluralism. Then there are also rep reparation payments for commercial TV, like the loss they get because of that. Then the value added tax is quite low for printed media. And, and digital now. Yeah, which we'll discuss after that. And then there are also subsidies for paper and printing. And one major point, it's advertising by the state. And a part of the subsidies, there's also a huge interconnection between journalists and politicians because they, they come from a um, similar background, which you can um, say that they have the same habitus. And so they... Yeah, they had the same education, and so they share um, their ideological um, predispositions and um, taste, taste judgments and so forth. And as we could see before already, a part of the interconnection between the government and uh, media, there's also interconnection between um, private investors and the media. And here we have a nice graph, which is, looks quite complex, but the main things, um, Le Figaro is owned by the, the Salt um, family. And as we know, like he, like the Serge de Salt, he died, but he was the 56th richest person on the world. And then we have Liberation, which is owned by Patrick Trahi, which is the uh, 205th um, richest person. And he's the owner of, of SFR, which is the second largest mobile company in France. Then you have, we have Le Monde, which is owned by Xavier Niel. <laughs> and as you can see, he's also one of the richest persons in the world. And he owns the Chabel Guy and Free. And he's the husband of Dolphin Arnold, who is the daughter of the richest person of the world, who owns uh, Les Echo. And he is the CEO of LMWH, and they own La Parisienne. <laughs> So we can see all this interconnection. Thank you, Christoph. <clears throat> so um, my part will be a bit more about Mediapart itself. And uh, I might uh, run the risk of repeating a bit of what you have already said, but I mean, maybe it's useful to just go over it again. <laughs> and you will <laughs> correct me in case I say anything. So it was founded, as you mentioned as well before, actually by um, by six, uh, by, by, um, by Edwige Plenel, François Bonnet, Laurent Maduit, Gérard Desportes, and uh, Marie-Hélène and Godefroy Beauvalet. Godefroy Beauvalet and Gérard Desportes, Desportes or Desportes? Desportes, uh, left soon after, or just before, as you mentioned. Um, so the first, um, the first four people were actually journalists. Edwige Plenel was um, also editor-in-chief at Le Monde until 2005. And uh, so were the others. They were involved at Le Monde or Libération, so very established journalists, um, while Marie-Hélène was uh, not a journalist, but had a lot of experience and brought the, let's say, the, the financial model for, for uh, economic viability. Um, so the goal was to establish a fully independent newspaper in times of a threefold crisis, as it's defined on the website. So the first crisis is a democratic crisis, which relates to the intertwinement between the government and the press and the, the presidentialism that is prevalent in France. The second aspect is uh, the economic crisis, which relates to the problems of economic viability of the press in France. And the third crisis is the moral crisis, 
relating to the idea that quality press was in turmoil or still is in turmoil. Um, we can discuss later about this in France, that uh, inside uh, editorial boards, uh, criticisms are, um, are dismissed. And so there was kind of um, um, a desire to, to, to fight these, this threefold crisis. Um, so, oh, sorry, could we just go back a second? So just to go very quickly through, through what the, the newspaper looks like. So it is online only, and um, they focus on investigative journalism. It is subscription-based, there's no advertising, and uh, the articles are behind a paywall. However, there are still five to seven articles published daily um, to still maintain kind of a, a daily newspaper aspect. And since 2011, actually, they have been profitable and growing. So um, some information on, on the finance, which was also already mentioned, but maybe it's interesting to go through it again. So 60% came from the founders and then 40% by Media Power Society of Friends, which uh, has 88 contributors of which some people, uh, that was a criticism uh, by, by some people towards Media Power. Some people are media moguls or private bankers of the French elite. However, what has to be, including actually uh, Xavier Niel, um, who has a very minor share in it, um, but what has to be mentioned is that uh, all these people, they don't own Media Power directly. And it, uh, the Media Power Society of Friends um, actually, because the two, if you include the two private investors, that's 40%, but the Society of Friends actually only owned 16%, so a very small um, aspect. And then afterwards, you had a few um, investors that added a bit of capital. So um, one controversy that arose was uh, related to taxes which um, because usually digital platforms in France pay 19.8%, then later this was increased to 20% taxes on their revenues. Whereas Mediapart self-identified themselves as newspapers. So from the beginning, so they paid the 2% tax rate, 2.1% tax rate, like any print newspaper. However, uh, the government actually uh, accused them of tax fraud and demanded the repayment of all their uh, the taxes that they considered uh, to have not been paid correctly for since 2008 to 2014. Since 2014, um, uh, online websites or online uh, digital media pay the same tax rate, but still, this uh, this is still claimed by the government this, for this uh, eight-year period, um, which is actually quite a substantial sum. So in March 2022, they had been con uh, condemned to repay 3.3 million in taxes plus a fee. Um, and maybe it would be interesting to hear your uh, kind of point of view on, on this and, and what this means. Yeah, so because it's, it's still not solved, yeah. So the European Court of Human Rights. Basically it went... I do hope so, I do hope so. <laughs> yeah under the Hollande government, yeah. And we'll see that actually, the right, I mean, no, no, it's, it's absolutely encouraged, but um, if we go to the next, so here is a list of a few landmark investigations. And in fact, the Cahuzac affair uh, is maybe the most interesting because that was the minister of budget in the uh, Francois Hollande cabinet in 2012. Um, if I remember correctly, the 13th December, 2012. Yeah, as you mentioned before, um, Mediapart published reports after an investigation that showed that uh, this, this minister had actually had uh, a private account in Switzerland, bank account in Switzerland, even though he was actually charged to, his role was to fight tax fraud. And this was a huge scandal and um, uh, included, uh, there, was, there were a lot of things that happened uh, in this context. Um, amongst them was uh, a whole campaign of fighting these accusations by the government. Uh, which is a train on which a lot of mainstream media jumped onto to then attack Mediapart, claiming that they actually did not have the proofs um, for this uh, report. And yeah. And then four months later, he admitted to it. So. <laughs>
And the five, the five key issue was the five uh, articles of Mediapart. And two days after, uh, Kaizak said, okay, uh, j'ai menti, j'ai menti. So this is quite interesting, isn't it? And I hope we can talk about this a bit more later. Yes, and six months after yeah. we had the tax. Uh, so tax. you can see that there, I mean, the suspicion that this is political re re uh, retribution is uh, is at least there. Um, if we can go to the next. Exactly. And so, um, as uh, Marie-Hélène mentioned before, um, the question of what happens once the founders retire was always there. And one model that was that inspired the, the model that then uh, was established with the, the fund for a, a free press is the Scott Trust um, that owns uh, the Guardian newspaper. Actually, it owns the Guardian Media Group, of which the Guardian newspaper is part, um, in the UK. Um, it was founded in 1936 after uh, the untimely death of uh, two important figures in the newspaper. And the threat was that if the third uh, owner would die, um, um, inheritance taxes would have been so high that the survival of the newspaper was threatened. So they convert, they, they um, transferred all the shares to a trust in 1936. This was then um, in 1948 kind of renewed and then in 2008 again in order to, uh, let's say, uh, enshrine the independence further. Um, the main cause was to um, ensure the financial and editorial independence of the Guardian newspaper. And the secondary cause, which is quite interesting and links with the Fund for a Pre Free Press that uh, Mediapart founded, is the promotion of freedom of press and liberal journalism everywhere, basically. Um, yes, and also obviously they have an endowment of one billion pounds, which is quite substantial. So the Fund for a Free Press, or the Fonds pour une Presse Libre, uh, it was founded in 2019. And because it is uh, a fund, it cannot have any shareholders uh, or no, in, no, no, um, um, no, si no individual owners, uh, and it cannot be bought. Um, the two main functions are to promote pluralism in journalism and to uh, ensure the independence of Mediapart. So to do this in 2019, all of Mediapart's capital, which was 16.3 million euros, was transferred. Uh, via this uh, society uh, for the independence of Mediapart, the SPIM. And uh, there's a very strict separation between the two. So the, the fund has no say at all into any editorial matters and vice versa. Uh, the Mediapart's executive um, or direct, directory board has no say in how the FPL manages its operation either. Um, and maybe it's easiest to look at it through the, the organigram. Um, Mine is in French, but uh, you will understand lucratif means for profit and non lucratif <laughs> means non profit. And um, so basically, the SPIM owns Mediapart and is itself owned by FPL, by the fund. In 2019, um, mine is a slightly older organigram, so the, uh, uh, the credit, the loan has not been repaid yet in my organigram, but it will be repaid very soon. Um, but so it's a scoop. No one knows that. Well, so, we hope so. In, in 2000, because uh, 2022 results are not published. I see. Uh, well, then, then it's it's the most uh, the most uh, <laughs> up to date. It was publicly available. Um, so a loan was taken of, if I remember correctly, 10 million euros uh, to buy um, the majority of the shares of Mediapart, and um, there were some donations as well of some uh, owners of the shares of Mediapart that. Um, gave some of their of their shares for free. Um, it's very important because Jean Louis Bouchard helped us at the beginning. It was the second one. I said, if I invest uh, five hundred million euro, do you agree to help us? And in yes, <laughs> five hundred thousand. Sorry, and uh, I asked him, do you agree to uh, to help us and invest uh, the same amount? And he said, okay. And uh, at the end, the value of his, uh, his uh, uh, share was 1 million euro. 
So he could uh, have uh, 500 uh, million of uh, added value, 500,000 million, 500,000 added value. And he, he, he gave the, uh, the amount to the, he gave 1 million to the uh, foundation. So that's a, a good uh, billionaire. <laughs> yes, no, but some, so many billionaires buy and ask money to the, uh, to the government. And uh, some billionaires, because he is also a billionaire, uh, help press and uh, give uh, to the foundation. Um, exactly. And um, what the fund does as well by collecting uh, donations and by receiving some dividends from Mediapart is to uh, finance, well, to financially support uh, different independent media, but also to um, give advice. Um, and uh, we had a list before, but those are a few, there are quite a lot of, um, of independent media that are supported through this fund. And I will hand over to Jeff now. Thank you, Paolo. Um, yeah. So, okay. No, no, it's fine. Yeah, thank you. So now the bad thing about speaking last is that I will have to go a bit quick because we want to, to have space for discussion. But we wanted to bring also um, the discussion of some of the of the challenges that uh, journalism as a profession, as a, as a, also as a public service has in this moment and what it means also for the democracy and so on, and what is the role of, of media part in that and how it compares also to uh, how things are happening around the, the world in this moment. So uh, this is what we wanted to do. So we, we read an article that is actually from from 2016, and actually from 2016, a lot of things have, have happened, uh, particularly that year, uh, the the word the, the the word of the year of the Oxford Dictionary was post truth. Uh, so this uh, idea that uh, uh, facts do not matter anymore. We had uh, the, the the campaign of Donald Trump that was one of the first examples at the global level of the impact of fake news and fake information and how dangerous it can be and how it can have real consequences. With also uh, conspiracy th theories. I don't know if you remember Pizzagate, for example. If not, Google it because it is uh, really crazy, these kind of things that happen. And actually, there is uh, uh, some evidence that uh, fa false news spread quicker than real news. So that, that represents a, a, a fundamental challenge for the people who make their lab livelihood trying to provide information like the people in the media. And also, we had a pandemic that increased our dependency on uh, digital technologies and digital platforms, as we saw uh, also with, with media part, uh, which means that also we are more exposed to, to this kind of misinformation and, and so on and so forth. So um, these are uh, just in general, this is from the US, but I think it quite applies and it's very interesting to see how media part in a way uh, was ahead of its time in the, facing some of these challenges. So the first one for most journalists is the flood of opinion and false information in the internet. The second is that the economic model of news is broken. And the third one, the traditional media companies need to adapt faster to new technologies. And these are three things in which media part, let's say, was uh, very innovative since the beginning and since the inception. Um, but also, we can also see in France, this is uh, about fake news, and uh, a lot of people, more than 30%, admit that they have also reproduced uh, false news and fake news. Um, and uh, the, the, also because there is a lot of exposure. So in the next uh, next slide, yeah, I will go quickly. So there is a lot of exposure to uh, false information. Um, Eighty-three percent, at least one time a month. Um, so this is like something that is omnipresent. It's, it's everywhere. And then we have uh, in the moment in which we need the more sources that we can trust. In the moment that we need the more. Uh, to, to, to be able to differentiate what is true and what is not is the moment in which the trust in the, in the press is uh, at its lowest in a, lot of, uh, in a lot of countries, as also uh, you were mentioning about the decrease in the, in the uh, free uh, press index and so on. Uh, and also in France, uh, of all the countries, of a lot of countries, is one of the countries in which people have the less trust in the press. 
um, uh, you see that, uh, I mean, it's uh, uh, beyond even lower than Philippines, than uh, Greece, than Chile, than Argentina. So it's uh, there is really a problem of trust of the French people with their media, which is, of course, the, the, the result of what we have been discussing about how concentrated it is and how um, it represents the interest of certain of certain groups. And then the other thing is about the business model and about how uh, the, 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 the digitalization of, uh, of the press has uh, meant a, a great challenge for most traditional um, for most traditional newspapers. So uh, we see that especially young people, people who are under uh, 35 years old, mostly inform themselves by the internet. I think uh, we are uh, aware of that because most of us, I guess, also inform ourselves mostly uh, by the internet compared to uh, older, let's say, generations that still have uh, their information in more traditional uh, ways. But this is just going to increase. I mean, as uh, as we grow older, uh, of course, the, the the number of people that use digital sources to to get informed will just increase. Um, and then um, the, the, there is another interesting thing about uh, so a, a lot of people in France use the 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 sites, the internet sites of the newspapers. But then a lot of people also inform themselves through social networks. So not even going to the site, but just uh, looking at the Twitter feed, the Facebook feed, and of course uh, that is uh, also challenging for the for the for the journalists, but also uh, ex exposes to a lot of uh, information that is around there, and we don't know what is the the real source. So this is um, another thing that we um, were seeing about uh, in, in the case of media part, there is a paywall basically from the beginning. So you get there and there is a, a paywall. Uh, we found some uh, uh, interesting research about what are the factors that impact subscription. Um, and it is really interesting that a lot of people subscribe after a free trial or promotion. Um, so this can be also something to, to take into, into account of how to attract new subscribers since it is one of the challenges to, to keep a media part um, profitable. Uh, but the other thing, of course, is the quality. So if I am paying for a service, if I am paying a monthly subscription, of course, I am expecting really high quality journalism, investigations, and so on. And uh, I think uh, that um, uh, this was one of the keys of the success of, of media part. And then, of course, a lot of people that also want to support the local journalism and that want to be uh, informed about things that happen in their more local surroundings. And so that is how I went like in five minutes through all my slides. Uh, and so now we have some just uh, questions uh, to, to open the, the debate. Uh, um, uh, so I don't know, you want to start? It? So the first questions are about like political independence of media. So um, like we thought that there is a difference between um, political independence and political neutrality um, because like if you have like a certain ideology you're always you're not political neutral and the question is is it even possible to be political neutral or not and um, also you said before that it's not the job of the government to support um, media and I think that's an interesting yeah <laughs> comment or, or opinion um, because we were also thinking that in many countries you have some um, sort of national broadcaster like BBC or something like that and I don't see that there is such a huge problem of independency like it, it can be funded by the state but it doesn't have to be um, like influenced by the government's decisions and yeah and it was also a question if if you have an idea why such thing does not exist for printed or like for digital or for newspapers in general, but it exists for um, television. Uh, one of my questions um, relates to to the fund. So um, because I the fund also exists to to step in right in case uh, there are financial difficulties. Uh, similarly to to the Scott Trust, if I understood correctly. And so one question was how this need for funding is defined or if there is a definition, uh, a set definition of when it becomes necessary for the fund to step in. 
And then secondly, uh, although I know there is no editorial influence by the fund, if there are any other, uh, how this is organized, basically, if there are any conditions, if there are any agreements uh, on how this process uh, is supposed to work. And I think we'll start with the first three questions and then maybe we give you the time to respond to the first three. <laughs> These are difficult questions. <laughs> oh, I mean, I can. Uh, I I, um, I I think we can be uh, political neutral, uh, but you, uh, we have to be, you know, media parties on the left side. But um, the investigation has no side, as we prove. Uh, uh, Eric Burt and Betancourt or Kaizak. Kaizak was the left government, Betancourt and Sarkozy was the right government. So uh, the question is not, uh, is it uh, left side or, um, or uh, right side? It's, um, is it, uh, no, it's not so good. Uh, I mean, it's a problem of uh, justice. And there is not a left side of the justice, a right side of the justice. They, they, um, they in français, je suis très bien. Ils ne respectent pas la loi et uh, ils uh, ont des pratiques frauduleuses. Et ça, c'est de gauche ou de droite, malheureusement. Donc, uh, le, le travail de, 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 de l'enquête et de l'investigation, c'est de, 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 de mettre au grand jour ces pratiques frauduleuses. Mais un, euh, après, vous traduirez, mais un journal n'est pas la justice. C'est-à-dire que nous publions des informations, mais c'est après à la justice de déterminer si euh, ça mérite de, 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 de condamnation ou pas. So, um, <coughs> both on the right and on the left, uh, there are people who, who act uh, not in accordance with the law and um, engage in fraudulent practices. And... Um, the, the 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 work of Mediapart is to reveal, to bring to light these fraudulent practices and to publish them. But what is important is the distinction between the publication of this information and justice. So they publish this information, but then it's the role of the justice judicial system to analyze and and um, uh, do more research to understand whether this uh, warrants an actual lawsuit or, or an invest, a judicial investigation. And justice is not left or right. I, in democracy, it's supposed to be uh, not left or right. Yeah. Uh, I mean, for the, um, the national uh, broadcaster, you have something like that with the uh, uh, France Television, Radio France, uh, so, but not uh, for newspaper. I don't know why, but the BBC uh, doesn't have a, B a newspaper. No, no. BBC is only uh, uh, radio and television, and so uh, I think it's, uh, it's not a big, uh, big problem. And now, you know, um, uh, BBC and Radio France uh, or France Television, they have they are on internet, so. Now, if all the newspapers are uh, digital, they are, uh, of course, newspapers too, now, more and more. And uh, the last one is, um, is uh, probably the most uh, difficult because uh, when uh, Scott Trust has been created, he gave uh, also his fortune, all his money to the Trust. So we, did, we, don't, we are not billionaires, unfortunately. <laughs> And we can't get uh, the money uh, at the fund, so we explain to the to the new team um, and uh, I mean the management team of Mediapart and the, the, the employees of Mediapart. They have to be profitable, and they have to put every year some money uh, as a reserve. How much do reserve? Reserves. Because uh, the key uh, the key problem is if uh, in ten years they are not no more profitable because they didn't take a good choice, and they need to have some money in their holding in, in uh, spin to be able to help them to 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 
to adapt to new model. Probably there will be another model, I mean, business model for newspaper in 10 years. We, we don't know exactly, but it's uh, uh, quickly and quickly now the change. So they, we have to, to, uh, to, to, to change something, but uh, uh, they need to have some, uh, some uh, reserves for that. And uh, there is a very important thing. Um, the, the, the pound can collect uh, donations but they can't uh, put money uh, in uh, the profit organization. So we can't have any, any donation from the fund. We can have money. So we, we must put some reserves in the holding and the, the money in the holding can uh, go back to Media Part if needed. But they have to, to, to create reserves every year. Yes. If, if I may follow up on that, uh, because I know the Scott Trust does yeah. long-term investment. Does the, the SPIM do this as well with the reserves that it receives from, from MediaPow? Or is this, the, the, do they just keep that money? They will have to, to, uh, to, to uh, we, we said, en bon père de famille, I mean, uh, raisonnablement. They will have, you know, uh, for the first three years, uh, four years, uh, they just have to uh, to uh, pay back the loan. So now it's uh, the, the, the next reserves will be uh, managed by the SPIM to, uh, I, I mean, not invent, but uh, get, uh, get the money safe. Thank you. I mean, that's the most important. You know, for investing, uh, if you have uh, 1 million euro, you, you are not very interested. <laughs> So they must have to, to complete reserve first. Thank you. Uh, yeah, especially just to give Jeff a chance to. Um, so uh, no, these, these are just my more general questions. Like, how do you consider the role of independent journalism and of media part in particular in this uh, scenario in maintaining a strong democracy? And um, what would you say are the main challenges that you face in your operation to deliver quality quality content? I mean, for the, the first question, uh, take care. Uh, the fund has not any share. It's uh, the, the, he, uh, il n'a pas de d'action. Donc, il ne peut pas opérer sur le stock market. It cannot be sold, but I'm not sure he could operate on the stock market. But I mean, he can. Uh, he doesn't have enough money, of course. So, uh, but he could uh, he could uh, have a bank uh, agreement of uh, put some money in. A, but I don't know. Maybe if uh, next year he has ten million euro or, or twenty million euro, maybe he could uh, invest. But for now, I mean, he we 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 thought. Uh, does he have to put money in the newspaper or just help the newspaper? You know, the, 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 pro, the, the, the press projects, they, they help. But for now, we consider uh, it's too early to, to, uh, to invest in uh, the capital of the newspaper they want, uh, they want to help. But maybe at the end, uh, it's a possibility because you, you know, uh, media part, Decide before the, the before having the foundation, uh, help newspaper, and we 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 put uh, some money in a small newspaper to help them to uh, to to. So it's a uh, Mars Actu. I mean, uh, in uh, in uh, south of France or in other uh, on the city uh, the cities in France. So maybe the fund will do that, but uh, invest in the market. I'm not sure it's. Uh, He's not ready enough. <laughs> and um, for the second question, I think uh, there is a, a very interesting book uh, whose name is uh, uh, Investigation Journalism, uh, The Democracy Detective. So it's, it has been published in, uh, in the United States maybe five or six years ago. And it's an, an analysis about um, how the investigation journalist has been uh, evaluated in the uh, in, uh, in, uh, United States, because at the beginning, you have a lot, a lot of investigating, investigative journalists in the newspaper in the USA. 
And after the, the main crisis about the paper, uh, they uh, didn't uh, reemploy, no, no, they didn't recruit uh, so many uh, journalists, uh, investigator journalism. And uh, most of the investigation now in USA is made by a non profitable organization, except if you consider the New York Times or the, the, the biggest ones, they still have the, enough money to, to, because, you know, investigative journalism is the most uh, cost, uh, cost, costly. So uh, it's very difficult for newspaper to, to, to pay a journalist for four months, five months, six months, and maybe at the end, uh, we will not publish because we can be absolutely sure that uh, there is no any risk about the investigation. So, and uh, the, 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 uh, this uh, uh, writer explained that he considers an journal investigation journalist is the best way to control democracy in, uh, in the companies. The, the most efficient for government, for private companies, for international companies, and so on. So maybe that's uh, that's the role of investigation, so uh, detectives of the democracy. The okay. main challenge, day-to-day uh, uh, -day operation to the... <laughs> I mean, it's um, uh, it, it's not it is the the key issue is uh, to be uh, dans l'actualité to be in the uh, in the day to day actuality. It's uh, because we don't cover everything. We ju we choose information. We can't cover uh, all the information, and and uh, of course we have to uh, to. Uh, give information they can't get for uh, uh, for free outside. So it's very difficult to to, uh, to stay at the, uh, at the at the right time uh, for the right, right information. And it's a very, very difficult job. You know, uh, editorial in chef uh, is a very, very difficult job. Okay. Uh, thank you so much for your presentation. It was it was really nice to uh, hear this story of things working out in the end uh, instead of the opposite for a change. Uh, and my question was about um, how to like how do you reduce the importance of capital in running um, in run like uh, are there alternative uh, mechanisms that come from creating management solutions or administrative solutions that help to reduce the importance of um, money in running the the investigation in running journalism <laughs> Yeah. I mean, there is a very important thing um, in media part, and uh, we reinforce that. Uh, first of all, the director editorial, say, edit, uh, editorial chief, chief editorial. Editorial chief uh, is cho uh, chose by uh, by the president of Mediapart, but uh, he is confirmed by the vote of the journalist. So uh, it's not only the decision of the CEO, but he has been the journalist uh, confirmed or in, or not the choice of uh, the. Uh, of the CEO, that's the first one. And on the other way, and that will be a change because we have completed the status to, to, uh, to put them more stronger. There will be a possibility for the journalists uh, since the change of the status of so next year, beginning of next, uh, no, this year, uh, they can um, 
comment est-ce qu'on dit, révoqué, un droit de révocation. So they can vote to say we don't, uh, we are not any more confident with this chief editorial and you have to change it. So there is a double power uh, from at the beginning for the truth. And if uh, there is any problem uh, with, uh, the, if, uh, for example, uh, chief editorial uh, doesn't respect the independence uh, of the journalist or doesn't publish or decide to, to change something, the journalist with a majority, so two third, uh, two third 70% majority, can uh, ask it to the to the CEO change the, the chief editorial, and that's a way. Even if you don't control the, the, the capital and the owner, it should be in every uh, every uh, redaction in in any newspaper. But it's not done for for unfortunately Bolloré when he bought uh, Europe 1, when he bought uh, a lot of uh, the. He, he destroy the, 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 the. Yeah, I have a question uh, which may sound a bit provocative, but it's in the same thing about uh, what Paolo said uh, about the post participation. Uh, I'm, I I'm wondering why we you you let um, Xavier Nel uh, enter into the participation of uh, Mediapart because he's known. He became famous when he said. When I have any issue with a uh, media, I just uh, buy some shares and they, they, they shut up just afterwards. He became famous about that. Why did you let him in, um, get into it? Because it's not that little. If we take the Société des Amis of Mediapart, I think it's 18% uh, which is held by him. And um, I was wondering how uh, it, it can have any impact on the, the, the editorial uh, line, because if Perhaps it's uh, unconscious also, because even if they don't have any recommendation or direct um, direct uh, recommendation to the journal, they may have some impact, unconscious impact on the on the line. For instance, during the, the campaign of Macron, there was not a um, very important uh, article on uh, the link between Xavier Nel and Macron and also Mimi Marchand and all the um, journalistic um, um, framework which uh, let him uh, uh, become president and also uh, recently you, you published a, a documentary uh, which is called uh, media crash and in media crash there is no any word about him about Xavier Nel even if he's one of the, the most most important uh, uh, one of the most important billionaires in France so I would have to I would like to have your your answer if I have time for another question uh, where is <laughs> Uh, 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 what about the censorship you are, you are, you are uh, I, I know there was a censorship by the state uh, in September. Uh, censorship? Uh, uh, censure. Censure. Oh, yeah. And mm. where, where mm. is, uh, mm. what is it about now? And okay. Then... So I can, is the same or it's another question? Okay, I answer. So, so um, as, uh, when we launched Mediapart, we, we try to, uh, to get money. And uh, we met maybe more than uh, 40 uh, funds for investment, and no one say, uh, "Okay, we will we will put uh, 500,000 uh, 500, euros or even 100,000 uh, euros." So um, we decide to, to put a lot of money by ourselves, but we we couldn't borrow more than. Uh, uh, five uh, hundred thousand euro, and uh, because after that you have to you know, to 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 repay for the loan. So um, we we searched from friends, and at that time Xavier Niel was not uh, interested by the media. Uh, we 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 didn't know he will be interested by the media. He was just the uh, very rich owner of a free company, Iliad Company, which is a um, in telecom company, internet company. And uh, he was at the time uh, helping a lot of small media. We, we understood after that, that uh, he could, uh, he was learning and he put a little bit money in, uh, in each new project because he was learning what he, he could be, uh, what he could do with that, he could do with that. But uh, at that time, it was not. It was only uh, on telecommunication, so it was not pursued as a risk. And we were very happy to find uh, one able to put one 
uh, so it be 100,000 euro because the other friends all together, the friends were 20, uh, no, 88 friends in the company uh, Société des Amis. And uh, most of them put 1,000 euro or 5,000 euro or uh, 10,000 euro. So uh, we, we need to have uh, more money. So it was uh, at that time we consider it's a good choice. And there is another problem with uh, Xavier Niel because uh, uh, after uh, in 2000 and, and uh, 2009, we need to, to get more, uh, more money, 2 million euro. And he was supposed to put uh, 500,000 euro at that time because we, we, we put 2 million more. And he said, okay, I will put 5,100. But just the day before so we, 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 we should manage the operation, he said, no, a change of mind and uh, I don't put the money. So it was a very, very difficult period for me because we have uh, established uh, all the documentation for 2 million euro and hopefully uh, DOXA, Thierry Willems, one of the accept to put 500,000 uh, euro instead of. So mm -hmm. at that time we said, okay, but it was in 2009, uh, probably uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a problem, it's different. And there is another reason about uh, Xavier Niel, you know, when we, uh, we buy back the, the, uh, the share uh, of uh, Mediapart, he put so 200,000 uh, uh, euro and the value he, he got was uh, 500,000 because of the, uh, of the uh, evolution of the value of the share. And I went uh, to his office and I said, okay, Xavier, you will get some money, thank you, but maybe you could give that to the fund because you don't need this money. And he said, and he never gave anything. So, so that's all. <laughs> but it was not a choice at that time. It was, uh, he was not, uh, uh, he, he didn't have any media at that time. And he was not uh, the husband of the daughter of Bernard Arnault at the time. And he didn't know, he didn't know Le, Le Monde and so on and so on. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, in fact, it's all the share, big, but uh, ADS has one share, so it's ninety-nine. Uh... Okay. Hello. Thank you very much for your presentation. I have two questions. First, have you ever faced during your career bribery attempt, so tentative de corruption? And my second question is that knowing how the propaganda is shaping the mentality and the opinions of the people, do you think that media should be considered as a constitutional power? Premièrement, est-ce que vous avez déjà été face à des tentatives de corruption? Et deuxième question, est-ce que sachant à quel point la propagande va avoir un impact sur, la, sur les opinions des gens, est-ce que vous pensez que les médias devraient être considérés comme un pouvoir constitutionnel? <laughs> uh, for the um, for the corruption, uh, no, or or we don't know one. <laughs> so, but I hope no. And uh, you know, people uh, who choose to work at media part are not uh, corruptible. I I mean, I hope so. So. Uh, so. It's a choice, you know, it, it, uh, work, work at Mediapart, it's a very difficult job because, uh, of course, it's daily pressure. You must be uh, every day at the uh, rendezvous. You, know, you, you must be... Uh, uh, you, delivering. Yes, delivering every day. And uh, there is never no stop, no holidays, no... Every, we still have always a lot of problem, and so it's it's a, it's a very deep. And if you stay in a, at Mediapart, yeah, that means you 
kind of enga uh, engagement. You you are not here by. Uh, you you can be uh, you can stay in media part if you are not uh, you know not the same way as the newspaper. So it's uh, it's not possible. And about the constitution, I mean. Um, it's not a it's not a French problem. It's a worldwide problem. Uh, I, for me, the, the the key risk is the GAFAM. Really, key risk is the GAFAM. It's a, I don't understand how a French government or a English government or Italian government or and so on can uh, let the GAFAM control. The information and control the democracy at least at the end. We, we, he, he said, uh, uh, look, what about the Brexit? Look at the role of, uh, of Facebook with the Brexit. Look the role of Facebook uh, in a Trump prediction. And, and uh, it's a major risk for, for democracy process. And I mean, it's not, uh, there is no control of this uh, worldwide uh, company. No control, except French, except the American government. Hello, thank you for your presentation. Um, I have a question a bit aside, but at the, the beginning of your presentation made me think a lot about uh, the the documentary, um, the new watchdogs, Les Nouveaux Chiens de Garde. And, uh, <laughs> and I realized like, uh, the documentary was also this, it, it sorted in 2012 at the beginning, and it like quite coincided at the beginning also of the rise of subscribers of Mediapart. And I was also wondering if like there was also any correlation between like the publication of this movie, which is like actually a very big critique of media possession in France, and was quite popular. So I was wondering maybe there was a connection between the two. No, I, I think no, there is no connection. I mean, uh, each uh, strong growth of subscribers are always uh, uh, important uh, breaking news. And uh, it's, a, it's a very strange process because they discover media part because they take a subscription to read the breaking news, but they stay because they discover media part and only 30% of them uh, stay in their part. If, uh, we discover that because when we create a business model, we didn't know that, you know, if you are a newspaper, uh, I mean paper, uh, you receive the newspaper every day at home or at your office. So you receive the information, you read it or you don't read it, but you receive it. On the dig digital uh, subscriptions, uh, the reader has to go on the website to read the newspaper even uh, help with the social network. So, so it's a very big difference. And uh, for the press, uh, paper press, usually if you have a subscript, uh, subscriptor, you keep 80% uh, eighty percent of them the year after and the year after. So it's very stable. Or on digital, we discover, unfortunately, because it was much more difficult, you have to recruit three subscribers to give one. So, so uh, in fact, we have more than one million uh, readers who bought one time a subscription to Mediapart. But we still have now 200,000 stabilized. But so it's a very, very hard uh, job to, to keep them and to, uh, to, uh, to fidelization. fidelization is a very difficult uh, on the internet. So many information and, uh, and so many. Uh... Hi, I uh, I saw recently uh, that uh, Mediapad published uh, an article investigation on um, the how do you say that. Um, Subventions to uh, paper press, yeah, subsidies which uh, mostly favored the uh, the four big groups that uh, uh, my colleagues talked about. So, do you what do you get any subventions 
do you, would you like to get some? What, what do you think about the, this? Yeah. So uh, we don't want any uh, French subvention, any uh, French government subvention. And of course, we don't ask for. And of course, we consider that uh, the, the, the French government should not give uh, direct help to the to the newspaper. You know, you have two kinds of uh, of subvention. You have one is a special uh, VAT taxes, so it's very low for newspaper. It's not to to give more money to the newspaper. It's to be able to have a lot a lot of readers without uh, a tax uh, a VAT added. Uh, so that's a good help for the newspaper. And it's the same for everyone, and there is no choice. The big problem is a direct help from uh, the French government to Le Monde, to uh, Liberation, to uh, Le Figaro, to uh, so this kind of newspaper. And that's a very pro big problem of uh, distortion of competition because uh, if I take an example, Liberation received seven, seven, million, seven uh, millions euro from French government direct uh, aid uh, during uh, 2021 and, and 2020. So, uh, it's a very big problem because we have to 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 face to um, to this kind of distortion, and uh, we can do anything against that. We can ch change the. the... So we, we hope uh, we ask to our subscribers, and you can all of them. You you have an English version, small English version. You can take a subscription, of course, and. Uh, we have to 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 defend this uh, this uh, this uh, situation, but we will not change the. Uh... No, no one. We have created uh, Media Crash, so it's a film we produced uh, last year with Cinq uh, Lee, and in fact, uh, we 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 uh, we finance, we pay for everything with. Uh, we, we, we share half and half with a uh, uh, production uh, company. You can't be independent if you ask money to the government or if you ask money from others. I will give you the, yeah. I have also two questions, but uh, yeah. after, so. <laughs> yep. Um, uh, Mediapart is also famous, I think, because of the, the video content on YouTube. Uh, most of uh, us young, young people are, are watching your videos and the debate and political debate. Very interesting one, by the way. Uh, I, I was wondering how do you perceive the, um, the arrival of uh, other media really connected to your content, such as Blast, uh, uh, Le Media, Le Vent Se Lève, all, all these kind of new media or, or who are, uh, which are producing the same content. Uh, there is a competition, or you have to yeah to difference yourself from them, or how do you f perceive this uh, this new medium? I'm not. Uh, I think it's not a competition. You, I mean, more you have a video from independent media, and uh, the best <laughs> that's the best thing for democracy. So uh, it's not a competition. With some of them, uh, we have some uh, partnership. For example, with Usul, we have a partnership. And others, we don't have partnership. They, they have their own way, and we have our, our own way. But I think it's not a competition. It's, uh, it's pluralism. And pluralism is a key issue also for democracy. That's a problem, yeah. We 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 don't have the answer. We don't have the answer. That's uh... okay. Uh, thank you very much for your presentation. Um, I was wondering, especially also because of the the time frame when Media Part developed, uh, what's your opinion on the emergence and and utilization of social media in general? Because on the one hand, you could say it democratizes access in the sense of uh, better diffusion and more 
uh, connections. On the other, there have been, like for example, with Twitter, a lot of uh, debates on where, to what extent, uh, is it democratic or not? And you were also mentioning the role of uh, GAFAM and how dangerous could it be uh, for, for like civil society and access to information. And in that sense, if you know if, or if, yeah, if, if you know, if there is some kind of shadow banning to media part by like engine search, uh, such as Google or in media, social media in general for being like independent and not related to any kind of um, big capital corporation. <laughs> C'est le risque des réseaux sociaux. So we have to live uh, with. That's a that's a problem. So uh, for, we, we, we have to be, uh, because I explain uh, a digital newspaper, you have to come to read it. It, it, it not delivered to you every morning. So w the social networks are a way to, uh, to, uh, to uh, help to the readers come and, and, and read uh, the information on Mediapart. But uh, they, will they will have to, uh, to um, to control the, the risk of the social networks, but uh, it's a worldwide problem. It's not a French problem, not a media part problem. But uh, we, the very important thing is to protect um, the data of our readers. We don't share uh, any information uh, of our readers. We don't uh, give any information to Google, to Facebook, uh, to Twitter, and so on. So if someone choose to, uh, to put information of what, uh, what he reads, uh, what kind of newspaper, it's his choice. But the database of uh, subscribers of Mediapart are very strictly protected. We don't ask anything to the readers. We don't know who they are. We don't know if they are male or woman, we don't know how old are, we don't know what they do, where they live. So, so uh, that's the key protection. If we, we have to use social networks, but we don't share anything with the social networks. No. No, 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 no. I mean, if uh, someone on Facebook say, I put on my wall, uh, I am not on Facebook, you understand? <laughs> I hate Facebook. <laughs> but journalists must have, must be on Twitter, must be on, uh, on sorry. It's an, an, another way. But if you put, uh, I read Mediapart on your uh, wall on Facebook, that's your choice. But it's uh, media part doesn't have to give any information to the so, to the social networks. Except if pirates like uh, Charlie Hebdo, we heard this morning that Charlie Hebdo yeah. got. I mean, hackers could uh, could took all the data and and when. But yes, it's it's important. We are, hmm. you know, we are uh, uh, daily uh, daily uh, engagement and security. Take care of. Uh, and I have I have three questions, but maybe there are others here. One is about this issue of of tax uh, with Hollande government. Uh, you are just telling us that you are continuing the, the fight with the Cour Européenne des Droits de l'Homme, yes. etc. So just maybe one word about that. Yeah. The second question is about um, you've said at one point in your in your speech that okay, the way uh, Mediapart is organized now with to trust with uh, with everything uh, is something that could be used 
for any other mm -hmm. type of company, yeah. uh, not just for journalism, just yeah. for to, to be independent from capital to yeah. if you want to pursue well, some. Yeah. So I don't know if you have something in mind already. Yes, yes, uh, OK. Yes, yes. And my third question was about, I don't remember. Okay. I answered uh, it too first. <laughs> yes, you can, you can, you can. And yes, the, the, the other one, but it's, it's related, is about, uh, I mean, Julia Cage uh, has also written uh, various things about how press could be independent. She, she's not talking much about this type of thing. So what do you think about other ways maybe to promote independence? Yeah. So, um... The VAT uh, question, uh, it was very difficult because uh, it was a time uh, we could be destroyed by the, the, the control of the, of the VAT. So uh, we had a, a big uh, struggle to say, does the uh, special uh, VAT uh, uh, taxes for newspaper is 2.1% 2, 2 instead of 20%. But is it linked to the paper or is it linked to the digital? And when we create Mediapart, we are the only one uh, answering the questions a newspaper can be a newspaper only on digital. And uh, at, at the time, uh, it was not allowed in France to be a newspaper without a print number. So we had to create the law for that and to ask to the commission, the special commission, the name is CPPAP, to say, okay, we are a newspaper and we want to, to, get, to have the right for press because it's very important that the, the, the law to protect the press uh, are very important in, in, in France. And of course, we don't want to, to, to ask 20% of VAT to our readers if uh, it's a 2.1% uh, um, for a newspaper, paper, paper medium. And uh, it takes uh, five years. Uh, you understood that after Affaire Cahuzac, uh, French administration decide to, uh, to say, okay, well, you are not allowed to have a, to have a 2.1 percent, and uh, we have to 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 pay the difference of uh, VAT between the creation and uh, the, uh, the the date of the change of the law. So we can have discussion about uh, where we are allowed to uh, to uh, to put the, the to 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 choose the 2.1 percent or not. That's a, a question of law but uh, we are still debate. But the key issue was they put a penalty for uh, 1 million and 400 euro to, uh, because they say you didn't respect the law. And that the penalty is uh, definitely not uh, just. So um, we, we have a huge procedure, you know, it's uh, 10 years after and it's still in process. So. For the first judge, judgment in uh, in France, uh, they say penalty are not due, and the second one they say penalty are due. So uh, we couldn't exceed more in France, and we said to Cour européenne de justice. So we we have written in uh, in July, that's uh, in uh, 20, uh, 200, uh, 2022, and uh, probably in ten. Years after, we will know if uh, the French government was uh, right or no. So that's uh, that's. Uh, but it's not finished, and I hope we will, we will, the government will pay back one million euro to to Mediapart. That's the first question. The second the one. Type of companies relying on this. Yes, of... uh, in fact, you have a lot, a lot of companies. It's not well known, but uh, uh, foundation is a way to protect the capital from uh, buyers, uh, uh, external buyers, not uh, not uh, not uh, friends. And uh, you have a lot of, uh, for example, uh, Rolex in Switzerland. It's a foundation. Carlsberg in uh, Germany is a foundation. You have a lot, a lot of company. Uh, they belong to a uh, foundation and they, they can manage the, the, the way uh, of uh, traditional business, but the capital is protected 
and uh, it can be uh, it can be uh, attacked. So uh, in France, you have uh, uh, already a, a group working on the, because with the foundation, it was very difficult to explain that the foundation can have uh, hundred percent of uh, uh, profitable company and uh, and uh, so. But with the, 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 the solution with fond dotation, it's much more easier. And uh, you have several uh, companies uh, transferring part of uh, totality of uh, the, the, the capital to a foundation. So uh, you have a group whose name is uh, De Facto. I, I work with, uh, with them uh, because you have also a lot of problem of uh, government, governance. How do you manage? Who is at the at the fund dotation? Who is uh, is uh, at the holding? Because the law in France, if you are at the foundation or uh, fund dotation, you can't be uh, you can't have any responsibility uh, on the profitable company. And this uh, is why you need a holding, right? This is why we did a holding, but uh, not for the not for the the, the, the fact. If you are in charge of, uh, if you are on the board of directors of the foundation, you can't have any responsibility. In we don't, it's not a problem with holding. The holding is linked because the money from the foundation, foundation from the foundation, can go to the profitable company. It's a, it's a strict. That's why we say Dry is a fake, uh, fake foundation because you know for Liberation. Drahi uh, put the, the shareholder of liberation in the fund dotation, but uh, and put the money and help directly liberation. So it's not uh, it's, it doesn't respect the law because the foundation can collect some um, donation with the tax uh, help, and uh, the tax help can't uh, finance a profitable company. So, tu veux quoi que je dise ça? Et Julia Cagé? Et Julia Cagé, she, 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 she uh, explains a lot of different models. Uh, so, it's, uh, uh, I mean, she's not in, uh, on the, um, the operational activity. She, uh, she's uh, uh, sur, un, sur un terrain, uh, comment dire, uh, Académique. Académique, merci. <laughs> Académique <laughs> aspect. Any other question? Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.